Hey everybody, Brian Von VA back at it again. What is the most damaging thing that you've done to your own character in the name of RP or for avoiding metagaming? Yeah, there's a lot of things you're going to do in this world to make things more authentic. So what did you do? Let's read it now. TLDR, my Warforged, is terrified of bags of holding after being torn apart in gaseous form after going inside of one. Also, fish. Just about offed myself with a single bag of holding. In one of my now current campaigns, I am playing a Warforged cleric trying to make his way through life after being inactive for thousands of years, finding religion to help guide him. I'm traveling with a party, one of which is a warlock, who is a noble ripped from time, who also has the bag of holding in question. Now, since Warforged don't have the need to sleep, I have before stuck my head in the bag of holding in a moment of roleplay. However, on our way through an interesting Alice in Wonderland-like dungeon, we had to find a potion to drink to get through a rat-sized door. The one I found was a potion of gaseous form, for me being the last one in. After I had gone through, we had another moment of roleplay where the warlock, who I failed to mention is also newish to D&D, asked what would happen if I went inside the bag of holding in this gaseous form, since I couldn't fit before. I decided out of game, that's a bad idea, but I decided instead, ah screw it, to roll with it. So lo and behold, my character's curiosity got the better of him, and he went into the bag. The DM's words were, you now have two choices. You can either wait to be taken out of the bag piece by piece and be rebuilt slowly but surely since you are still alive, or you can roll a new character. You may have remembered I said just about off to myself. The warlock still RPing decided to stick his hand and think cleric to pull me out. The DM was nice and told us that the warlock pulled out my warforged completely whole but not before I got dispersed into a million pieces. I now have PTSD over bags of holding, which I will never touch one again, and will be mute for many sessions to come until I can get over the trauma of being in an empty void, feeling my entire body ripped apart and become solid again in said void, only speaking in times of need. I spent the rest of that session only saying one word. What was in the bag of holding? Fish. I want to shout out one of my players who took this to the next level. He was fully aware that there was an ambush in a dungeon thanks to the obvious hints I had given out. Tiny holes in the walls, bunch of light small hissing voices whispering loudly and goblin tongue talking about wanting to murder the intruders, and even some spears poking out of the holes. They rolled really low on their stealth check so I made it into a joke. But. His character had really low wisdom and was known for being a bit dull despite having high intelligence. He asked to roll for perception to see if his character would notice or care about the obvious hints. And he rolled a natural one and it became a negative one. So while the other PCs were talking about what to do, his character went on full Leroy Jenkins mode on their asses and just waddled in without a care in the world. He then proceeded to get curb stomped by the very obvious and badly hidden goblin ambush. It was f***ing hilarious, especially because he said in character, ah, Where did these tiny weird child sized creatures come from? Who could have possibly guessed something like this would happen? Oh no! Well, I tanked a bite attack from a Remoras to save a child my character had known for less than a day then, I attacked the monstrosity with a melee attack while I only had 1 HP left. My character didn't know about its heated body ability. I almost died. How did you not die? Explain yourself to me. My rogue was close friends with the paladin in our old campaign. We were fighting a custom beholder wielding the Eye of Vecna our DM had made. There's a beam coming from that weird, rotten-looking eye, and my character decides to jump in front of the beam. Good thing, too, because it was disintegrate. Well, unfortunately, this backfired because although I saved the paladin's life, he didn't have the resurrection spell prepared, and by the time he could have, it would be too late. Luckily, my dagger was capable of eating souls, and since I died with it in my hands, I got sucked in to find every single enemy I had ever killed up to that point in the campaign. Fun times! 
Also, I, I really kind of want to know the story of how they got your soul out of that dagger, so if you're listening in, hey, Brian wants to know. My character, Marhilt, followed the plan of a sorceress who was trying to summon the Raven Queen. I was a newly dipped warlock and she had given me power, and I trusted the plan for roleplay reasons. The DM gave me an option to give myself to the Raven Queen or sacrifice my nephew's newly established fiancé. I said to allow me to serve you and to take me. My character died, and his soul was taken and shredded by the Raven Queen. Well, didn't see that coming. Thought I would be rewarded with more power. Lost my first ever character from my first ever campaign. Rest in pieces, Marhilt. Probably when my character decided to set off a detonator manually in an armory filled with petroleum. Fact is, out of character, I knew exactly how these detonators worked in-universe, and I'm in a family that deals in petrol. If the detonator didn't work, I could always just think of something that would. Thing is, my character was a prim and proper soldier who would have zero idea about any of this except for the detonator and its manual arming function. I destroyed the target and reduced it and my character to glass. I decided to pull from Halo Reach when I did and made his last words hit. Tell him to make it count. My old group tried to maintain a pretty strict no battle planning rule in the midst of encounters. Combat is chaotic, you take your turns fast and don't debate all the possible outcomes with the group. I actually kind of like that idea. Well, in one combat we are fighting water elementals. I am running a bard with a negative two con and wearing a cursed ring which further reduced my hit points. So I'm incredibly squishy. One of the water elementals whelms me and absorbs me into its watery form, where I try to get out but eventually fall unconscious. The druid's turn comes up. He's been a bit distracted and checking some spell descriptions on his phone, finds them and asks the DM which water elemental is the damaged one. The DM indicates which one the one with my bard's unconscious body inside. I cast call lightning! Zappy bap! <laughs> it took all of my composure to not erupt and demand he do literally anything else, but I kept stoically silent. As the druid murdered the water elemental and the character I'd been playing for about a year at that point. As the DM described the elemental boiling and evaporating to reveal my drowned, dead bard, the druid's eyes were extremely surprised. To be fully honest, I was a little salty about that situation. My character had an NPC that became a personal follower and was an escort mission. Everyone in our party had to get their NPC through an active battlefield to safety. The DM told us straight up that we would be rewarded for every NPC that survives, and we would get a HUGE reward if everyone survived. Now these NPCs were super weak, and to make things easier, they took their turns with us. So we basically took two turns at once. Low HP, but they knew some magic. So long as they stood behind their main character, they could actually be pretty useful in a fight. Well, as we were in the heart of the city, invading giants started hurling boulders. That's not good. We quickly ran to different ends of the town square for cover, separated by an open plaza, and started planning. We realized that if we just kept trying to run through the city, we were all going to get taken out. We would have to split up, and some of us would need to go fight the giants to stop them from hurling boulders. The other half of the group decided they would challenge the beast, and I would take guard of everyone's NPCs and continue to lead them out of the city. When they said that, I started to giggle because I realized my personal NPC's death warrant had just been signed. Our DM had given each of our NPCs a trait, along with their meager, pitiful stats. And my NPC's trait was, has always dreamed of being an adventurer. He promised himself that the next time adventure comes calling, he would not hesitate to answer. The other players took their turn. They moved their NPCs over to me and started to run towards the giant. Then came my turn. I told the DM, I'm moving my character and these NPCs forward as we're going to use the buildings, as a line of sight cover, and continue to make an exit from the battlefield. My DM goes, A oh, great, quick and easy turn, no, wait. And then I begin to monologue. This was it. This was his chance. It's literally staring him in the face the moment he has been dreaming of his whole life. If he doesn't do this now, when will he ever? 
He might never get another chance, I tell the DM. Against my better judgment, my NPC screams at the top of his lungs. I'm coming with you, comrades! We will slay this giant together! He makes a mad dash to catch up to the combat team, but as he runs out of movement directly in the center of the open plaza, in direct view of the giant. The DM bursts out laughing, and then ends with a soft, evil, yet impressed inflection in her voice. <laughs> ah, ah, I see. On the next turn, my NPC failed to dodge out of the way and was crushed, and instantly killed by a boulder hurled by the giant. There is a greater than zero chance my character is about to lose half their soul in the very next session of our campaign. Here's a long story short. A loved one my character lost long ago is about to be brought back, but my character is split between going back to their loved one and continuing the quest they are on to save the world. They feel they owe it to both sides to go on, but don't want to risk dying in their quest to save the world and thus leaving their loved one in the same position they have been in. Now, during our travels, we saved a person from death by returning half their soul. Long story, their soul was being used to keep a witch alive, and while they were okay with dying as long as the witch died, as well, of course, we managed to save some of their soul, and thus, their life. And thus, my character realized that a person can exist with just half their soul, if not perfectly. And so, I intended to propose a plan where my character's soul gets split in half. One half placed in a clone prepared by our wizard, who can go with their revived loved one, while the other half continues on the quest to save the world. I even have plans for some memory alteration shenanigans so that either the halves won't realize what had happened. If this plan does come to fruition, I do not know what the consequences will be for my character, but I know my DM and there will be consequences. Now, he knows I'm okay with that. We had a long discussion on what I intended to do. Hey, might I add a little constructive criticism here? If you're in a situation like this, maybe this is a great time for your character to actually retire with their loved one because half a soul, that's just going to make the new person feel bad. The loved one's going to hate you or they're going to feel like they're missing something. Plus, there may be unintended consequences of you losing them anyway. So, retire the character, train up an apprentice, and promise your party that you will send this apprentice to them within a certain amount of time as long as you can find someone worthy. Maybe it could have been someone that you saved in a previous adventure, or somebody brand new that you know is looking to help save the world, but simply does not have the experience, though they have the enthusiasm. Be a great way to introduce a new character, retire your old character, and then one day bring your old character back in the grand finale with their loved one to say, we remember our obligation to save this world. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and tell your friends about us because we want to meet some new people. And that said, if you've got a comment to share down below about something that you've done to your own character for the sake of RP or to avoid metagaming, let us know. We love you all, be safe, be happy, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.